so I can make sure that I'm not just talking on my laptop here and you guys can hear me. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay. Still got a couple people trickling in, 903. Let's go ahead and begin here. This one's going to be pretty short and sweet. I just spent uh, the last week or so up at the uh, United Hardware Show in Minneapolis. And, man, I just love getting to know our customers. We do so much of our job over the phone. It's uh, so awesome to go there and see the user group meeting and, and talk to the people and really appreciate you guys' business. So thanks so much for uh, being our customers again. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about 2D scanners here. Um, why type when you can scan new 2D scanners? This is the topic today. And um, with the description here is uh, we're gonna. It's a 30-minute webinar, but uh, this is gonna be a pretty short, sweet one. I flew in last night at about one o'clock in the morning, so uh, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna be going the full 30 minutes here. But uh, that's okay. We'll still be thorough with it. Uh, we want to talk about some of the advantages of using a 2D scanner. How to save time. Uh, go ahead and collecting information with this 2D scanner. All right, I'm being assisted by Jenny. Jenny, uh, if you could go ahead and begin this uh, recording right now, that would be excellent. All right. Okay, so just a little agenda here. Uh, you know, I'm going to be answering what is a 2D barcode scanner? Uh, where 2D barcodes Found. What's kind of the difference between a normal normal barcode and a 2D barcode? Um, when do I use the scanner and why do I care? Why do I use the 2D scanner? So those are some of the things that I want to go over. Again, like I said, this is going to be uh, pretty short and sweet here, so we will be able to we'll release you get back to your day here pretty quick. Okay, so where? Uh, well, what is a 2D barcode scanner? Well, the 2D barcode scanner it reads a two-dimensional barcode. So uh, 2D barcode scanners, they store the data in two dimensions rather than just a series of black and white bars. That's a one-dimensional scanner. 2D barcodes look like checkerboards or a series of traditional barcodes stacked on top of each other. So if it's really busy looking, you're probably looking at a 2D scanner. Um, it's, it's a graphical information that store, it's a graphical image, excuse me, that stores information both horizontally um, as a dimensional, bar, traditional 1D barcode does, and also vertically. And as a result, the 2D codes can store of about 7,089 to be exact characters, so a whole lot more data and bigger storage can be put into the 2D scanner as opposed to the 1, which usually I think can put about a 20 character capacity in a unidimensional barcode. And we've got a bunch of different models of the 2D scanner. I put the yellow one up there. Uh, it's a pretty tough. We've got wired ones and Bluetooth ones that you can go wireless with, and kind of some industrial strength ones that are very robust in their construction, so you can drop them. They're not going to break that sort of thing. Uh, okay, so where are they found? Uh, first places we're going to find them is driver's licenses. On the back of your driver's license here, I've got Yoda's driver's license. Here we can see that this is a two-dimensional barcode. Uh, on the top, now the bottom one that I, that I have displayed here, the one that the arrow is not pointing to, that is a one-dimensional barcode. And I found when, sometimes when I'm demoing this, this feature of our software at the show, and I, it'll kinda, it's easier to get the one-dimensional barcode scanner, and the 2D barcode can do both. They can read both of them. So make sure that I like to cover my thumb over that one-dimensional barcode, so that way the scanner is forced to only pick up the 2D barcode. If you scan it, you just get a string of numbers. You're like, this isn't doing anything. You just hit the wrong barcode is what's happening there. Uh, military IDs, really any state-issued ID, they use a very similar format of those two-dimensional barcodes, and the barcode scanner can read the data on them and then kind of parse it out so it goes the right data information goes into the right field. Uh, lots of times you're going to find what's called a QR, a quick response barcode. This is just a different format of 2D barcode. Um, and you use them, find them in marketing materials a lot of the times. You'll see them on the side of buses. So then you can take a picture of it with your smartphone. And it'll usually embedded within it is a link um, to a website or maybe um, a coupon or some sort of promotional materials by the store. Uh, and there's lots of, you can go ahead under File, Setup, Forms. 
at the very bottom, you can enable, there's a little checkbox that says enable QR code. And you can upload a little QR code that will go ahead and print right next to the other standard one-dimensional barcode on the bottom of your receipt at checkout. So your customers can be led to your website by scanning with their smartphones or perhaps a 20% off deal that they show next time they come and check out and, and we can go ahead and kind of uh, increase their customer experience a little bit that way. So you can set that up, file set up forms down at the bottom. Um, now as far as how to create one in the first place, there's lots of websites, free services out there that can allow you to make a custom QR code uh, that you could use. Just go and type in uh, create my own QR code in Google and there's a whole bunch of different services that you can pick from. Okay, where do you use it in the system? A couple different places. First one is creating a customer. Now these four boxes look pretty similar to each other here, but that upper left one here you'll, you're probably familiar with is the create a customer screen. That's F2 and we're in the customer module. Brings that up and we, we can go ahead and just scan the back of the ID and it'll go ahead and just collect all of that information and put it in the right spot. Boom. So all we have to do is scan, hit F12 and it'll add the customer. Next one is making a special order. You can have Paladin prompt you to create a customer when using a special order. So if you when creating a special order at checkout. So if you don't have a customer added to the special order, Paladin will prompt to create a customer so you don't ever have to leave the invoice quote, hop over to customer, hit F2 and scan. Nope, it'll just come up right there. You can scan and collect their customer information very quickly, process the customer on through. We've now got them saved forever into Paladin. Um, for our pharmacies listening in today, we've got stop meth info for the Inplex. When you when you process one of those pseudoephedrine or ephedrine items, box comes up, looks very similar to the collect customer information box uh, that you can additionally boop, scan that barcode and all the information gets parsed into the right spot. Uh, and then any other sub controlled substance item. Um, some states see paint thinner as a controlled substance. You'll kind of have to look into what your state, how, how it views that item. Um, and then you can go ahead and set that up within Paladin, so it just automatically prompts so the clerks are never going to allow that customer to process on through and buy that item without collecting the appropriate information. Same thing with weapons, if we've got any gun, ammo manu uh, sellers listening today, you can go ahead and collect the information that you need to collect from the government just by scanning that barcode on the back of the ID. Uh, and then any other pseudoephedrine items, um, like uh, cough syrups with codeine, things like that are cons controlled substance items. We need to make sure that we have full customer information when uh, selling that item. And then anywhere at the very bottom, you see not the four boxes, but at the very bottom, you see that name. I got the gray arrow pointing to it. That little box is a tiny little ID card right next to uh, the name field. Any place that you see, I might have missed out some collecting customer information box, and if I did, you see that little card anywhere on there, you can certainly, that means that, hey, you can use a 2D scanner here to scan the barcode on a state-issued ID uh, and collect the information from the customer. Okay, and the last one, and I think this is the most important one here, uh, is why do we care? Now, I know there's a couple real obvious ones, speed of checkout. Anything, the, any, obviously, you know, the quicker we can make the customer checkout process, the better it is for our customers. I'm going to have a lot better experience in your store, not standing in line waiting for you to collect the guy in front of me's information. Um, quickly collecting the customer information, your employees are going to spend less time collecting info and asking, you know, what's your name, what's your address, and more time doing their job providing better customer service. And whether that means just flying through the checkout and getting them out or asking about how their experience was in the store, did you find everything all right, was there anything that we could do differently to better serve you guys sort of thing. Uh, this next one I think is real important, reduce human error. I know my little fingers um, are very fallible. I'm always putting stuff in and later I look back and realize that I did it wrong. And when selling controlled substance items or a pseudoephedrine product, things that we are legally mandated to collect this information, we really can't afford to have that human, that margin of human error in there. So let's re and remove it entirely by just having a 2D scanner, boop, scanning the barcode, quickly collecting that information. Um, now, many times I find that stores are only collecting customer information on customers they have extended lines of credit to. Uh, some call them house accounts, some call them charge accounts. This always breaks my heart a little bit, as is always better for the business and for the customer to have their info. 
better for the customer because we can quickly give them access to their buying history details, uh, recreating invoices. If they come back and say, hey, you know, I bought a little blue bottle of something really helped my gout or a widget that helped me hang something on the wall last week, but I can't remember what it was called or where it was located. Well, if we have, we can get that information without the customer uh, information, but it's way quicker if we know who our customers are to bring them up, look through their specific history, and go ahead and better serve them. So better for the customer there, and it's also better for the business because we can provide better customer service and we know who our customers are. You know, it's way better to walk into a store and be called by my name than it is just, you know, welcome valued customer sort of thing. Uh, I think in many cases, this is going to make the difference between knowing who our customers are and not knowing who our non-charge account customers are at least. You know, obviously the charge account customers, we need to have their information on file. So I'm not really talking about them so much. You certainly use this to collect their information quickly as well. But I think that this is good for the non-charge account customers and I think it may make the difference as to whether we know who they are or we don't know who they are. You know, if I'm buying something in your store, maybe I'm a do-it-yourselfer, just needs to come in, quickly purchase a few items. Uh, you don't need to necessarily know who I am and I'm probably not gonna let you time to uh, to let you take the time to collect all my information. You know, excuse me, what's your name? How do I spell that? What's your street address? What's the road name? How do I spell that? What's your zip? So on. This can take a long time, especially if we don't have Johnny Types fast sitting on the keyboard. It can take a little bit of time. So now we just ask for the photo ID, simply scan it, and many times it's our policy already, especially when doing a credit card transaction, to ask for that photo ID. Why not take two extra seconds, F2, scan, beep, now we know who the customer is forever. It's going to be stored. And, and why? Why is this important? Why do I want to know who our customers are? Besides the obvious ones of being addressed by name when we come in and being able to reprint the receipts and things like that. Well, I, I just want to quickly review the 80-20 rule, and I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here, but it's just it's important to be reminded of these things sometimes. You know, 80% or 20% of our customers are bringing in 80% of the profit. And I like to ask a store owner three questions. Who are your customers? What are they buying? And what are we doing to make them love us? And if we cannot answer question one, then we cannot possibly begin to answer questions two or three. And I think this is, this is huge. Uh, so I think that this is going to make the difference between us being able to answer that question number one in our non-charge account customers and, and, and not. So really important stuff. Uh, if you want to get a 2D scanner, this is something that you would like, you can go on our website. There's the new web store. Hopefully you guys have been using it and enjoying it. Uh, reporting any bugs that you find, as always, we want to know about the things that we aren't doing well. Uh, you can go on there and buy a couple different models. You can also call customer service and just order one there. Um, and that's what I got for you guys. So do yourself a favor, collect that customer information quickly and accurately, increase customer experience both for your business and for the customers, get yourself a 2D scanner. And that's all I got for you. I told you it's going to be a nice, short, and sweet one. Now, next week we're going to be doing the business of bin tags. There's a lot of um, mystery and, and perhaps a little confusion out there as to you know the difference between an item tag, a bin tag, a shelf tag, when do I use them, how do I use them. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it and a lot of different things that we can make the system, we can kind of tweak inside the system to make it operate a little differently. And there seems to be a lot of confusion on that. Uh, and it's a pretty advanced, maybe not advanced, but um, robust topic. There's many different areas that you can go ahead and do that. So we want to go over all that stuff in pretty good detail. Um, and we're going to be talking about bin tags next week. And I think it's called the business of bin tags is, is what it's called. So uh, please go ahead and register for that one. You'll see it pop up as always on your Paladin update features and fixes box. Uh, see you guys next week.